Hi there. This is a topic video focusing on remittances as a source of finance for developing countries. Remittances counts as money sent by people who live and work overseas back to their country of origin. And in 2014, the World Bank estimated that the total global value of remittances was over $580 billion. Indeed, they also estimated that one person in 10 of the world's people that's over 700 million people, are directly affected by remittances. A lot of sub-Saharan African countries expect to receive less aid in 2017 than they did in 2014. So remittances are becoming increasingly significant for those nations. Countries can receive external financial flows in several different ways. Remittances is one. Aid is another, otherwise known as overseas development assistance debt and portfolio investment flows, and, crucially, foreign direct investment. Now, this chart shows the net flows of remittances and foreign direct investment, overseas aid and debt and portfolio equity to developing countries since 1990. And in 1990, overseas aid was the biggest single source of financial flow. It's now down in fourth position. FDI has surged ahead but notice the volatility of FDI flows. And there's also been a significant increase in remittance inflows to developing countries. And that's what we're going to focus on in this topic video. In Africa, for example, remittances are worth about 24% of external financial flows, whereas in Asia, remittances are 49%. And this table shows countries that are most dependent on remittances including some countries where remittances are more than 20% of their GDP. I think it's worth bearing in mind that, save for Bangladesh and the Philippines, these are essentially very small countries with a relatively small population, and certainly a small GDP in terms of billions of dollars. So remittance income, when it flows in, can often be a very important source of extra, extra income into the circular flow, and it's also going to be a big percentage of GDP. Uh, for African countries, the remittance income is important for many. You can look at this in various ways. One is as a percentage of GDP. And in 2014, Liberia was the most dependent on remittances in the African continent. 26% of GDP. The Gambia, close behind, at 22%. Another way of expressing the significance of remittances is as a percentage of the value of imports because oftentimes it's important for countries to generate the dollars to pay for essential imports of goods and services. And you can see that in the Gambia, remittances accounted for 40% of the value of imports. In Nigeria, 26%, down to Uganda, 13%. So for many African countries, remittances are a significant source of external development finance. So what are the key advantages of remittances? for families living in less developed countries. Our focus here, I suppose, is in lower and lower middle income nations in particular. But many of these arguments can be applied to countries that are middle income. Well, first of all, uh, remittances add to the disposable incomes of families, and that can help fund basic education and basic health care, often for large families. In rural areas, remittance income can be a key source of money to help families invest in land, seeds, livestock and basic farm equipment, which can then, of course, increase productivity. For some families, remittances are a major factor helping to reduce their risk of falling back into extreme poverty. And that money could be used, in theory, as collateral or security for loans, perhaps from the microfinance organisations. I think fundamentally remittances, providing household income, are vital in terms of reducing the rate of malnutrition, which is well widely recognised to impair brain development. So for families, remittances can be significant and very important. What about the macroeconomic advantages of remittances? Well, of course, the macro effects are the aggregation or the sum of the microeconomic effects. So the previous slide is still relevant to the discussion. However, here are some extra points. If remittances flow to lower income households, and in particular if they flow to families in poor rural areas, then remittances can help to bring down the level of inequality as measured by the Gini coefficient. 
and if remittances are used to fund basic infrastructure and basic tools, better seeds, for example, and fertilizers, that can lead to higher productivity in farming, as well as better productivity from increased and improved nutrition and basic health care. For many developing nations, remittance incomes help to avoid or absorb the full impact of big external shocks. Many, many low middle income countries are highly dependent on just a handful of primary commodities. and If the price goes down, export revenues and GDP suffer as a result. Remittances can act as an, uh, as an absorbing mechanism for that. For many countries, remittance incomes are a key source of foreign exchange. In other words, dollars. And they help to overcome the domestic savings gap which is needed to fund investment. And for these countries, remittances do count as an inflow on the current account of a balance of payments. They're a source of primary income in addition to the value of exports of goods and services. However, it's important to be able to evaluate. Remittances have grown in significance, increased in importance for many developing and emerging market countries. However, remittance incomes do carry some negatives as well. I think a really key point is that the cost of transferring money across countries can be extremely high. Monopolistic firms such as Western Union can charge above 10% for sending just a small sum from a Western nation or an Asian economy to back to sub-Saharan Africa. So one can argue that the monopoly power of these businesses is a major cost. Many people in rural areas and less developed countries don't have access to traditional banking services and that can limit the impact of remittance inflows. And one could argue that the reason why remittances are coming in is in part because of the net outflow of outward migration of skilled and younger workers, which actually causes the workforce in these countries to decline and may have a negative effect on aggregate supply or productive potential. In some cases, a big inflow of remittances could cause the exchange rate of a nation to appreciate. And that in turn could lead to damaging consequences for local manufacturing businesses. And here's another argument, which I'm not sure how valid it is, but it's worth probably thinking about. Some economists say there's a possible moral hazard issue from remittances. In particular, households receiving substantial monthly incomes from overseas may choose to remain inactive in the labour market and live off the remittance income themselves. That would, that's what economists would call the disincentive problem created by moral hazard. I think it's quite important to be able to put a bigger picture into this debate. So here are three quotes from three different organisations who have studied the impact of remittances on developing countries. And I've chosen these three quotes because I think they provide a really good example of evaluative phrasing which can be good for the exam. The Economist came out with a super quote in 2014. The effect of remittances on GDP growth depends upon how the money is spent by recipients. The World Bank did a study in 2015 on remittances and they argued that remittances act as a major counterbalance when capital flows weaken. And the Asian Development Bank has studied remittances in emerging market countries in particular and they argue that remittances have more impact, in other words, focusing on the long term here, remittances have more impact when they provide capital for starting businesses, promoting the growth of the private sector. So if investment ultimately funds, funds investment, sorry, if remittances ultimately funds investment, there are long term benefits. If remittances essentially just fund consumption, the impact of remittances could be less in the long term. Hopefully this has been a quick, useful session for you, looking at an important trend in development finance, namely the trend increase in remittance income to developing countries. Thanks for joining in. See you again sometime soon.